Hello, Sammy or Sami. Uh, please forgive me for whichever of those was incorrect. I recently saw your video and I immediately appreciated it for the directness of your question. I mean, too often this debate reduces to this tally of the good and evil works attributed to either side of the debate. Too often the dispute decays into this incidental line of questioning about the origins of morality. Or it deteriorates into this unproductive, meaningless banter as two people talk past one another or over one another's heads. So it's, it's nice to talk about the central question, which is, of course, the existence or non-existence of God. Uh, to be upfront with you, I am not yet prepared to accept your challenge. This video is largely a solicitation for more information. I cannot currently offer you a conclusive argument which disproves the existence of God, but only because of a number of deficiencies in your challenge. But please be sure, I would like to accept your challenge. First, you fail to specify which God and whether or not we can speak of this God in singular terms. I mean, are pantheons to be addressed in your challenge or merely monotheistic interpretations of God? Would the God of Spinoza and Einstein be relevant or not? You see, the most serious and fundamental flaw of the challenge, that is, the flaw in the current incarnation of the challenge, is that I have no operational definition of God to use in order to disprove his existence. You haven't provided me with one. Is he big? Is he small? Is he material or immaterial? Is he accessible by scientific methods at all? If not, why not? If not, how is he accessible and through what avenues would a person deduce his existence or non-existence at all? Is God bounded by the universe? If not, what do you mean when you say that he is not? If God is bounded by the universe, should we expect to find him in any place in particular, or am I required to disprove his existence everywhere? I mean, I can readily enough disprove the claim that Noam Chomsky is standing in the room with me, but I can't disprove his existence everywhere. I should also forewarn that certain definitions are practically synonymous with non-existence. If you define God as timeless, spaceless, and immaterial, then you've basically defined him out of existence, in my opinion. I mean, what can you possibly mean when you define something in those terms? Some definitions just make it obvious that God doesn't exist. If we define God as a 200-foot monkey who climbs the Empire State Building every night, we can safely conclude that God does not exist. Other definitions are problematic in other ways. Will you be attributing any logically impossible characteristics to him? If so, I'm afraid I can't disprove what you can't say coherently, because any characteristic which produces a contradiction is forbidden to you, of course. I don't think that it's necessarily forbidden to God, but you're not permitted to insist that it's one of his qualities as much as you might like to. That is, even if God isn't bound by non-contradiction, you are. You're not even allowed to claim that God isn't bound by non-contradiction, in fact. Now, I am an atheist, but I'm also an agnostic in a very loose sense, because I'm not firmly convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that God does not exist. I don't know with certainty that God does not exist, chiefly because it's never been explained to me what it is I'm expected to believe or disbelieve in. I mean, if I begin to discuss something called gibber flabs, you couldn't sensibly profess a belief or a disbelief in them, because you don't yet know what the hell I'm talking about. Gibber flabs could well be something you've simply never encountered or heard of. But I do hold a positive belief that certain kinds of gods do not exist, but only those which have been defined for me, and the same is true for you. I mean, you don't believe in Odin, do you? Well, I just treat the Abrahamic god that way. After a brief lifetime of hearing about him, but never hearing him properly defined, and after a few years spent searching for uh, something to point to God, what he is or what he might be, I've concluded that he's made up. Just like unicorns and Santa Claus, though honestly, unicorns and Santa Claus have logically coherent definitions which permit the sort of disproof and investigation you've asked for. The same intellectual process that led me to a positive belief that there is no Santa Claus led me to the positive belief that there is no Odin, Zeus, or Loki. If Santa Claus could be shown to exist, I'd probably believe in him, after he satisfied certain conditions like living at the North Pole among elves, delivering packages to children on the 25th of December, etc. But I need you to provide me with similar conditions which would allow me to check the available evidence and determine the absence or presence of the critter you call God. So again, I have no single or conclusive argument to disprove the existence of God, just as I have no co conclusive argument which disproves the existence of will-o'-wisps, elves, fairies, ghosts, or gibber flabs. I mean, if you can't define these things in meaningful terms, I'm afraid that the implications go beyond rendering me incapable of disproving their existence, but it also has a serious impact on your ability to claim a belief in them. I mean, after all, how can you ha even have a meaningful conversation, even with yourself, about a generic thing of which you are unable to conceive in concrete and logically consistent terms? That is, what thing are you positively professing a belief in? I mean, we all believe in dogs. But we can provide definitions which permit us to investigate their existence, and we can assess the claim, dogs exist. It, it's not even very hard. The same must be true of God. Now, after such a definition has been provided, I promise to take a crack at it. 
So most of the objections I suspect you've received have been along the lines of pointing out that it's unreasonable to first believe a claim and then demand disproof. As such, I won't belabor the point. I mean, you, you get it. I only mention it to differentiate my question from theirs. I am not asking you for a positive reason to believe in a thing. Though in the grand scheme of things, that is what I require. No, right now I am asking you for an operational definition of the thing. It's from that starting point alone that any person can begin a serious and meaningful inquiry into the claims involved in your challenge. So, in the absence of such a definition, what your challenge currently reduces to is something like this, though it's even more general than what I'm about to say. I'm thinking of a person. I will not say that they are alive or dead. I will not say if they were male, female, or androgynous. I will not say if they will be tall or short. I will not say if they were fat or skinny. I will not say if they are light-skinned or dark. I will not even say if they ever were at all. You are simply expected to know all of this for yourself. Now prove that this person doesn't exist. This is the Godless Heathen, signing off.